What's going on? And welcome back to another episode from Reaching Recovery. I'm your host, Baron, and today I want this message to get in your spirit. You are already equipped to overcome that narcissist. You're already equipped to defeat that narcissist. You have an anointing over your life, which is giving you the skill set for victory. Now, anointing. I just watched a sermon from uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes, and he described anointing pretty well. He said anointing is a divine enablement from God in order for you to overcome a situation or circumstance. Now, the anointing that you have in you is a spiritual and a natural gifting that's going to allow you to not only endure what you're going through with that narc, but overcome it and overcome it on top at the at the tail end of it. Now, it seems like it's unfair that you had to come across this person and you had to have that experience. But it was predestined. It was meant to happen. Now, let me stop there because that's a tough pill to swallow. Even I haven't gotten that all the way down yet. But you're not going to be free from hardships in this life. It's written right here in the good book. Turn to John 16.33, and it's in red. Jesus is speaking directly. He said, you will have tribulations in this world. Not you might. Not there may be a chance. It's you will. But do not be dismayed because I have already overcome the world. But don't miss out on the fact that you have you you have gone through some hardships and there's some more hardships to come. But the silver line to it is you're already equipped to deal with it. And should you happen to forget that? Should you happen to get overwhelmed and you get to a state or a point of weakness? You got a heavenly father in your corner that's going to help you in your weakness. You, you got you the mightiest of mighty as your tag team partner. When you feeling worried, you tag a man and he go ahead and give him them holy hands until you recover. And on top of, on top of that, there's a blessing at the tail end of this thing. But I ain't going to jump the gun right now. I'm going to say that to the end. We're going to get into the meat and potatoes of it. We're going to talk more about this natural and this spiritual gifting that you have. Now, keep in mind, God already knows what you're going to go through. God, the all-powerful, omnipresent, he knows what you're going to go through and he equips you for it beforehand. Now, here's where, here's what I find so interesting about the Bible. Is that as you mature, you start to see different things. You may read one passage and understand it one way. Then a different season, you read another passage. And you're able to put those two together and come to a whole nother complete understanding. So when I learned that, and when I went back and reread that God knows you, before you're even in your mother's womb? I started thinking, well, you you knew me even before then. You knew what I was going to go through. You know your perfect will in my life and what I need to do to get there. So I need, you, I need you to understand what that means when he says, I knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. That's past, present, and future. So he knows what you're going to go through. He knows the opposition that's going to try to stop you from your blessing and exactly what they're going to try to do. So he puts that special sauce in you. He's like, all right, well, you're going to need a little bit. You're going to need a little bit more dexterity. She's going to be a little, she's going to need to be a little rough around the edges in order to overcome that and to reach her blessing. So before you're even conceived, you have the anointing, the spiritual and the natural gifts inside of you to overcome whatever's going to come down the pipeline. And that narcissist is what's coming down the pipeline. But don't dismay. You got this. You just need to understand that you got this. 
What do I mean by that? Well, we're not omnipresent. We live in the present. We sometimes worry about the future and we sometimes reminisce on the past. But I'm saying that to say, we don't know what's coming next. And sometimes we have a gift on us that we don't even know why, why you gave it to us. We don't even know it's a gifting. So, so you may ask yourself in one season about a, a particular trait you have that you may not think is beneficial. Let's just use an example. Let's say you ask God, God, why'd you give me just a tad more conviction than everybody else? It seems like I just got a little bit more conviction in me that keeps me from wilding out like my like my friends over here that seem like they're having so much fun. And the thing with God is he'll answer the question, but he's not confined to time. So this is what's going to happen. You're going to ask and you're going to wonder and you're going to ponder. And then let's say you get into your 20s, 30s, 40s, and then you get pulled into roles of leadership. You don't understand. All throughout your life, you kept getting pulled into, ro pulled into roles of leadership. And then that'll finally click. You'll finally hear the answer. Okay, you gave me the con conviction because when I made it to the position as leader, you needed somebody that was going to have an inward compass to do the right thing so that they would motivate everybody connected to them to do the right thing. Oh, okay. It, okay, that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, let's 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 take something else as an example. I, I like where this is going. Let's take compassion as an example. God, why'd you give me so so much compassion? Why do I even feel for my enemies? Then again, it'll be answered, but it'll be answered in time. So let's say you get in adulthood. You have some children, and you understand. Okay, I needed the compassion to raise these children. But then, not just the children, everybody connected to you sees your compassion, your caring nature. They see you as a living example of godliness represented in the world. So not only do you build up that children, you build them up strong, you build up your community, and you're the backbone of a nation. You, you don't even know it. So understand that even though those traits may seem meek, that they're going to accomplish great things. Now, I know y'all caught that. I know y'all caught me. I say I use meek for a reason. Because like I said with the Bible, when you start understanding it, when you start to understand how it all ebbs and flows together, when you understand that the meek shall inherit the world, then it's starting to make a connection. Okay, those character traits that you thought weren't as beneficial, that you thought you were getting taken advantage of sometime with, they actually are going to be towards your benefit in the long run. And not just your benefit, anybody connected towards you. So let's look at the definition of meat. So let's look at the Bible definition of meat, uh, or what a meat character trait is. So it's humble in an evangelical sense. Submissive to divine will. Able to overcome multiple offenses. Now, if you just think about what you got on the inside of you and how you endured your narcissistic situation, shit, you understand those character traits are examples of your meekness, not weakness, your meekness. And eventually you will overcome and you'll be the victor. Now, I see you. I see you out there. This is all positive. This is all great to hear. But where does the narcissist come into play? Where is overcoming the narcissist? Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked. So we're going to jump, jump right into it. Now, I told you there is a vast blessing on the other side of this when you overcome this trial and this tribulation. But 
the enemy understands that as well. And the enemy is disturbed by that. So what he does is before you about to get your socks bust off, before you about to get that blessing, you don't have room enough to receive. He got to stop that. He got to send one of his agents into your life to try to snuff that out. And I talked about the grand scheme of it because it's not so much about you. It's about what's going to come from you. It's about what you're going to influence, what you're going to build. And he knows if he can snuff it out the, at the source, he can snuff out the foundation of that thing. He can continue a generational curse that's been going out, going through the, the lineage of your family for, for years. He can stop your ability to be the curse breaker. That's when a narcissist comes in. You know what? You know what that narcissist is? That narcissist is your Goliath. That's going to be our reference to the Bible today. First Samuel chapter 17, David and Goliath. We ain't going to read it word for word because you already know the story. That narcissist is your great enemy. Now, don't get it twisted. When I say great enemy, I'm not giving them the grandiose. They this big and they this almighty and powerful. No. I'm saying your great enemy because... That's the last enemy you'll face before your true anointing, your true inner power is awakened. So this is how I want you to look at that. With David and Goliath, when you start reading Saul, I'm sorry, when you start reading Samuel, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you start reading Samuel, Goliath is he's one of the most described enemies in the good book. Look, he gets, I think he gets four pa passages talking about him, talking about his size, his girth, what he was wearing, the weight of his spear. And that's because he was the adversary that was going to lead to all of David's blessings. He was the adversary that when David encountered him, everything that was gifted to him, all the battles he fought before against the lions and the bears was going to manifest in him in such a way that he would be awakened that any enemy before him wouldn't stand a or any enemy after him wouldn't stand a chance. That's your narcissist. <laughs> when you come across that narcissist, the first time, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but for most of us, the first time we're unaware that people like this exist. So this is what happens. Just like Goliath, in your book of life, that narcissist is going to get a couple chapters before you defeat it. Just like Goliath, hey, he got a couple passages in here. Strictly describing him. But after you defeat that enemy and you unlock the blessings on the other side and you unlock what's in you, all the enemies that come after, they may get a little blip, but you'll wipe them off. You'll, you'll wipe them right off the screen. Now, here's the turning point that's going to activate that. So, yeah, that narc got in. That narc used their abusive tactics. Just like Goliath, he, he, he made it to their encampment and he was talking all types of mess. But eventually, it's something that stirs. It was something that stirred on the inside of David. Now, he, he knew about the blessings on the other side of it, but that's not the part that really interests me. The part that really interests me was when he was listening to Goliath. And just like that narc, they say or do something that activates all that inner power in you. And when you read David's message, he's a young man. He's a 17-year-old man. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that challenges the armies of the living God? Even as small a stature as he was, 
when that narc, when that enemy goes too far, it unlocked all that in him. And it was time to battle. And as you know, it wasn't very long of a battle. Coming I mean, because the power you got on side of you, the enemy can't rival it. So you're already destined to win. You're already de destined to defeat that narc. Now, I don't want y'all, any of y'all to take it the wrong way. Um, take it literally when I say defeat that narc. I don't need no, anybody on the next episode of Snap talking about YouTube made me do it. No. <laughs> when you defeat that narc, it's a, you're defeating the purpose, the toxic purpose they had over your life. You're defeating your tolerance towards that abuse. You're just defeating all that negative energy, all that bad, toxic, demonic stuff, and you're removing it from your life. So that's what I mean when I say in terms of uh, defeating that narc. So you not only remove all that, but you move into a better version of yourself. And then you move into the blessings on the other side of the thing. And like I said, from that point forward, for you, from this point forward, especially if you're getting this information right here, watching this type of content, you have either already won or are winning your battle. And are getting ready to walk into your blessings. And the next time an enemy comes across you, you already know what's in the inside of you. You'll, you'll already be able to quickly identify who they are. And you'll be able to strategically avoid or defeat their advances. I need y'all to walk into the blessing on the other side of this thing. I need you to get this in your spirit. You're already equipped well before you were conceived to overcome this toxic situation that you're in. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cut it for now. But as always, I thank y'all for allowing me to fellowship with you. I love you and peace.